and I'm going to create a new project. This will just be a basic Cocoa Touch application, which I'm going to call Nearby <laughs> Friends. All right. So Xcode has just created this new project. My application is going to use the built-in address book APIs so it can access the contacts database on the phone. It's also going to use the built-in core location APIs so I can add a location-based service. In my case, I'm going to filter be between showing all of the contacts and just those contacts within 10 miles of my current location. Now since what I really want to show you is how to construct the user interface, I'm going to drag in the controller glue that's already written. This is around 300 lines of code that talks to those address book APIs and the core location APIs. All right, let's go ahead and build the user interface. This is Interface Builder. In the center, you'll see a window which is the canvas on which we'll build our user interface. On the left-hand side, this is a library of all those Cocoa Touch controls. Let me go ahead and drag out a search field. Now you can see the search bar automatically changes size to fit exactly perfectly for the iPhone. I'll drag out a toolbar for the bottom. It snaps right into place. This comes pre-populated with one item. I don't want to use that item. I actually want to use a segmented control. And this is the control I'll use to uh, switch between seeing all of my contacts and just my, my nearby ones. Now this is interesting, it has a couple different looks depending if it's in the content region or the toolbar. Interface Builder knows this and automatically gives it the right appearance. I'll say this is for all my contacts. This is for my nearby contacts. Now I want to center that uh, in the toolbar. This is incredibly easy in Interface Builder. It has great layout controls. So now I've centered it. In fact, I've centered it in such a way that even if the toolbar changes size, it'll stay centered in the, in the middle of the toolbar. Now you might ask, when would a toolbar change size on an iPhone? And the answer is, well, if you rotate from portrait to landscape, it changes size, and you notice we automatically keep that centered, and you can test all of that right from within interface building. Now there's one more control I need, and that's to show all of my contacts. So I'll drag out a standard table view control. Position it right in here. And we're good. So now I can actually simulate this interface. It loads it up in the iPhone simulator. You can see here's the table view, all the standard uh, behaviors. I can click between the buttons. And if I click in the search field, it automatically brings up the keyboard. The next step is to wire this up with my code. So I'll quit the simulator, go back to Interface Builder. The great thing about Interface Builder is it knows all about the code you're writing in Xcode. So I can actually tell if this is that nearby friends controller I dragged in earlier, and now I can tell if that right there is your search bar. This here, that's your table view where you should show uh, the contacts. And if someone taps on this control, go ahead and toggle your nearby friends. That's it, we're done. We've built the interface, we've wired it up to our, con to our code, and now with one click in Xcode, it runs the full application. These are now my real contacts. If I click in here, it brings up the keyboard, and if I type something, say, Phil, it filters right down to <coughs> Phil Campbell. That's how easy it is to write an application and test it in the simulator right here on your Mac. Now let me take it one step further, which is I have an iPhone plugged into the computer here, and I want to test it on my iPhone. That involves only changing one pop-up. I'll change that to say build for the, for the iPhone. One click, build and go. It's now compiling that same application, packaging it up. It, uh, signs it correctly for my development environment, for my development device.